I'm Kayla Rogers, a senior accredited VA claims agent here at Chisholm Chisholm and Kilpatrick. And I'm Jacob Nadro, lead advocate at CCK. Today, we're going to talk about some of the lesser known aspects of foot claims. If you're dealing with a service connected foot condition, but wondering if VA rated your claim correctly, this video is for you. So let's get started. VA recognizes various foot conditions that can be service connected. What are some of the common foot conditions caused by service? Some of the most common foot conditions that we see in our practice are things like pes planus, which is fat, uh, flat feet, um, plantar fasciitis, hammer toes, arthritis, or peripheral neuropathy. So Kayla, say a veteran files for service connection for a foot claim. What exactly do they need to prove a grant to prove to get a grant of service connection? They're going to need to show three things. The first is going to be evidence of a current diagnosis or symptoms of a foot condition. The second is going to be evidence of some kind of an in-service incurrence, whether that be treatment for a foot condition in service or evidence that they had some kind of an accident or an injury to their foot while they were in service. And the third thing that they'll need is a medical nexus that provides a link between their current symptoms and their in-service event. Okay, I know that there are compensation and pension exams, also called VA exams, in relation to service-connected claims. Could you tell us a bit about how those work for foot claims? Yeah. During a CMP examination for foot conditions, the examiner is going to basically do a physical examination of the veteran's foot. They're going to confirm any diagnosis or diagnoses that the veteran might have for their foot or, or both of their feet. Um, they'll also discuss the onset progression and the severity of the condition, asking questions um, about you know, their ability to ambulate. Um, there might be some uh, range of motion type questions, things like that. Um, and they'll also ask about assistive devices, um, things like shoe inserts or braces, canes, walkers, necessity of a wheelchair, things like that, um, to help assess the severity of the condition. And the examiner may also provide that nexus opinion if um, the claim is for service connection. Okay, and let's talk a bit about secondary service connection. connection. Could you explain how that might apply to foot claims? Yeah. Secondary service connection is a theory of service connection where you can get granted for a condition that's not directly related to service, but it might have been caused or aggravated by another service connected condition. This can be the case with a lot of our foot conditions and some of the common causes that we see in our practice are things like um, peripheral neuropathy secondary to a diagnosis like diabetes mellitus. Um, we might also see one primary foot condition causing a second foot condition due to overuse of that first foot. Um, so there's a few different ways that, that you can get the secondary service connection here. And can a service connected foot condition lead to other health issues? Absolutely. Um, foot conditions can have their own set of secondary conditions. Um, I just mentioned one where one foot might cause a second foot condition. Um, you might also see other orthopedic conditions arise from foot conditions, things like um, knee conditions, hip conditions, back conditions, especially if there's um, an altered gait or a limp related to that first foot condition um, that can cause additional strain on those other parts of the body, um, which can lead to further injuries or health issues. Foot conditions can also cause difficulty with things like exercise, which can lead to weight gain and obesity, which obviously would come with its own um, set of health concerns. So say a veteran had a foot condition that existed before service, what do they do if their service potentially made that foot condition worse? They can still get service connection based on a theory called aggravation. This is basically when VA recognizes that the condition existed before service, um, but was worsened beyond its natural progression during service. An example of this might be a veteran having their flat feet noted in their entrance exam. Um, but later in their service records, they sought treatment for pain related to that flat foot or their flat feet, um, which would be an indication that it, it had worsened throughout the course of their service. Um, that being said, it is really important to note that VA does get this wrong a lot. They'll frequently deny these types of claims just by saying things like, oh, there's no evidence that it actually worsened. Um, so in these circumstances, medical lay evidence um, showing or discussing those worsening symptoms can be really helpful. All right, let's move on to ratings. How exactly does VA rate service-connected foot conditions? They rate everything under their schedule of ratings for the musculoskeletal system, which can be found in um, Title 38 of the Code of Federal Regulations, Chapter 4.71a. Um, for foot conditions specifically, they have 
a subset of diagnostic codes that have specific diagnoses associated with them. Um, and VA does have to assign those diagnostic codes if you do have a diagnosis for one of those foot conditions. Um, in addition to those, they have another diagnostic code, which is Diagnostic Code 5284, which is used as sort of a catch-all um, for any other foot condition that doesn't necessarily fit into one of those other diagnostic codes. So for Diagnostic Code 5284, what ratings could someone get for a foot condition? The rating scale for Diagnostic Code 5284 is a bit vague. Um, they rate it based on severity. And what they do is they would assign a 10% rating for moderate symptoms, a 20% rating for moderately severe symptoms, and a 30% rating for severe symptoms. Um, the criteria is a bit purposely vague just because it can encompass a whole host of different diagnoses and symptoms. Um, so it's really meant to accommodate all of those different diagnoses that um, can be coded under this, under this regulation. Um, I do wanna note though that some of those other diagnostic codes um, that are more specific do have higher ratings that are available. Um, but like I said, they would have specific criteria that would need to be met outside of just those, you know, moderate, moderately severe and severe um, regulations. Okay, so there are a number of terms that veterans may come across when researching, you know, various foot claims. Let's talk about a few. So the first one is pronation. Can you tell us what that means? Pronation refers to the rotation of the foot and the ankle um, that causes the foot to land on its inner edge when walking. It's something that VA is specifically going to look at when they're rating conditions like flat feet. And the more defined that is, the higher the rating would essentially be. The next phrase would be analogous ratings. Can you go into that a bit? An analogous rating is what VA will do if a veteran has a diagnosis for a condition that doesn't have its own diagnostic code, but the symptoms are similar to another condition that does have its own diagnostic code. Um, VA may rate that condition under the diagnostic code for the similar conditions so that they encompass those same symptoms. Um, for foot conditions specifically, this may mean that they assign one of those more specific diagnostic codes, um, depending on what the symptoms are. But again, if your symptoms don't fall into one of those disability pictures, they'll use diagnostic code 5284. And the bilateral factor, can you tell us what that is? The bilateral factor is additional compensation that VA will award if a veteran has disabilities that affect both arms, both legs, or paired skeletal muscles. It's VA's way of recognizing that disabilities that affect both side extremities are inherently a bit more disabling. So to do this, VA will combine disabilities that affect the left and right side, add 10% of that value, and then they'll proceed with further combinations to get your, your total combined rating. Um, we do have a ton of other videos and blog posts that go into a lot more detail on this. So if you're interested in learning more, um, I definitely recommend checking those out. And the final phrase here is loss of use. Can you go into that too? Loss of use means that there is no effective function remaining in the extremity, such that a veteran would be equally well served by an amputation or prosthesis. Um, in cases where loss of, use, uh, loss of use exists, VA may assign additional compensation called special monthly compensation. Um, if it's just loss of use of one foot or one hand, rather, um, they would assign um, something called SMCK, um, which as of December 1st, 2023, would be an additional $132.74 added to monthly compensation. If you have loss of use of both feet or both hands, um, it would be a higher level of SMC, which we would call SMCL, um, which as of December 1st, 2023, would be a total compensation amount of $4,651.06 per month for a single veteran. Okay, Kayla, thank you so much for all that great information. Uh, so to wrap things up, foot conditions can have a significant impact on your quality of life, and they can lead to other issues that may also increase your combined rating. If you have a foot issue that might be caused by service or by another service-connected disability, you should definitely consider filing a claim. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more updates. Take care.